And welcome back to Ram and the Bush Ministries. My name is Robert Levingston and I'd like to thank you for spending the time out of your busy schedule to study God's Word as it's presented to us in the Bible. In John 14 6 Jesus said the following, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If you are a follower of Christ, you understand what he means. That he is the Son of God. He is the part of the triune God, or the Trinity. And the fact is, the Lord God has given him the responsibility of judgment. You are being a follower inevitably you're going to be challenged by either atheists, Muslims, other cults that do not believe that Jesus is a son of God, that Jesus is a part of the Trinity, and you're going to be challenged. Now as a Christian and a follower of Christ, you should be able to respond not by saying, I just have blind faith because it's not blind faith. You should be able to prepare yourself or be prepared to respond in a logical and understandable way. In Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Questions may be asked is, why do you believe What's in the Bible is true. One of the first responses, or proper responses would be, is that the Bible is a book of prophecies. There are around 300 prophecies about the coming of Jesus Christ. Just to give you a few, in Micah 5, 2 it predicted Jesus would be born. In Zechariah, it predicted that Jesus would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, and this is year, hundreds of years before he was born. In Psalms, it predicted his clothes would be gambled away. In Psalms 22:16, his hands and his feet would be pierced. In Psalms 34, his bones would not be broken. In uh, Isaiah 37:31, he would be born in the tribe of Judah. In Hosea, he would be called up from Egypt, Hosea 11.1. 1. In Isaiah 53.9, the Messiah would be buried in a rich man's grave, which all happened. There was a professor at MIT. He did a mathematical computation with the odds of even one of these prophecies coming true. And he said for one of the prophecies, the odds for one being fulfilled is one in 100 trillion. In other words, mathematically or scientifically, it is impo improbable for that to happen. And we're talking about several hundred prophecies. The mathematician said if you took 100 trillion silver dollar coins and spread them across the state of Texas, they would be two feet high to cover the entire state. And if you took one coin and put a mark on it and put it along with the other coins, and if you went to, you could go to Lubbock, Dallas, El Paso, all those areas, and blindfold a man. That's what the chances are. Would be able to pick up one coin. In other words, the Bible is factual. That is just to show you 
the probability that it was luck. Mathematically, this proves that the Bible is true. You can reference historians that wrote about Jesus and the fact that he actually lived, he died, and was crucified and rose from the dead. Let's, let's name a few of them. Josephus. Josephus was a Jewish historian. And there's a book now. He wrote the uh, Jewish Wars that you can purchase or read. Jo Josephus talked about Jesus, that he had followers, and that they reported his resurrection. You had Talmud. He talked about Jesus being executed before the Passover, and he had magical powers. You understand? You have to understand. These people did not believe in Christ. But they were lived at the time that he was active in his ministry. You had Thalius, he documented Jesus was crucified, and at that time, darkness fell upon the land, and he chronicled the earthquake, just as it said in the Bible. You had Tacticus, he chronicled about Jesus and his followers talked about Pilate referred to him as Christians and they were ex and he was executed under Pilate. Bar Serpion, he was another one. He chronicled the Jews wanted Jesus dead because of his teachings. You had Philegon, he talked about the fact that Jesus predicted the future, that he rose from the dead after death, and he showed signs of the crucifixion. In other words, to prove that he had been crucified and rose from the dead. And there are many other ones. The fact is, there are people who were not Christian or followers of Christ, but they were contemporaries. They lived at the same time and they were well respected historians and they wrote about Christ, which is another justification that Jesus was the Son of God and that he lived and that his ministry was and is active. Look at the disciples. When the disciples were scattered, when Jesus, there was only one disciple there that when Jesus was crucified, and that was John. The other ones ran off. And there was a reason why the empty tomb was discovered or found by women. is because if a woman found back then, unfortunately, it's, it's a little different now than it was then. They didn't take the words of women. They didn't believe them. And I, that is why the Lord allowed the women to find the empty tomb first and then directed them to seek out the disciples or apostles. And when they met the, those very apostles who ran, who didn't believe, they met him, they followed him, they believed and they martyred themselves. No one's gonna be martyred for something that they don't believe in. James, the brother of Jesus, he talked about his non-belief and the evidence in seeing his brother and becoming a follower. And finally, Paul. Paul, or Saul, was a enemy of the church. He was a persecutor of Christians until Jesus confronted him on the road to Damascus, he wreaked havoc. After he met with Saul Christ, the risen or resurrected Christ, he changed his life. He became a follower. He was a non-believer. He became a follower. Why? Because he saw Christ. Because he believed. And ultimately gave his life for the ministry. These are some of the reasons, as Christians, 
that we believe, that we give God the glory because we know what he says is true. And that as scripture said, life is but a vapor. If you don't believe when you die, you think this is the end. That's it. You die. But according to scripture, the words of Christ, no, there is an everlasting after this, either in torment, away from God, in the lake of fire after judgment, or in his eternal kingdom. But there is only one way to get there, and that is Christ. Second Timothy says the following, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will, cons they will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, puffed up, pride, and lovers of pleasures rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. That's in 2 Timothy, verse 3. So guard yourself, prepare yourself. We're instructed to go out and spread the gospel, win as many souls as possible, in spite of what's going on right now. If you once again, I'd like to thank you for studying with us. If you like this video, or you like the study, please subscribe if you have not already and give us a thumbs up. Join me as we close with a prayer. Blessed Father, Father of all creation, we thank you, Lord, once again for allowing us to come together to study your word. We pray, Lord, that the study has been profitable, that it may equip your followers so that we can plant seeds Reassure those who may have questions and bring lost souls to you. Lord, these prayers we ask in your Son's precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen.